when you're dabbling into the world of network programming and especially doing this with Python, we have a great library called Socket that enables us to actually work with network programming. It's really important to understand the basics. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics, but this is the first video of a series of a three part series where we're going to build a chat room using Python. This is going to be only Python. We'll use Tikinter as our GUI. We'll use Socket to enable our server and client. It's a great beginners project. The prerequisites will be discussed in this video. The next video will be for the server side and the third video will be for the client side. By the third video, we should have our chat room fully functioning and we'll be able to invite people and actually chat with them. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the part one and part two. Now let's get started, guys. Okay, look guys, in the process of creating this chat application, you also learn basics of computer networking and learn client server architecture. The client server architecture is a basic computer module where the client requests services from the server while the server processes this request and provides services to the client. In fact, your web browser is a client requesting web services from YouTube. And what YouTube does is that the YouTube web server processes your request and returns the video that you're actually requesting for. So this is how it works. And this is the basic concept we're going to use to create our chat room. Now, what I want you to know is that a server can also serve multiple clients. And a great example is the chat room we're going to build where we want to actually have many clients which are talking in real time. The client software will send a message to the chat room server and the chat room server will broadcast our message to all the connected clients. Now guys, let's talk about protocols. Protocols, protocols, protocols. This is really important. Let's really delve into protocols and understand the whole concept of it. Communication over a network uses what we call a protocol stack. And the whole concept behind this is building higher levels, more sophisticated conversations on top of simpler, more rudimentary conversations. What does this mean? The network layer can be represented by the OSI model and the TCP IP model. Each network layer corresponds to a group of layer specific network protocols. We can see them right here, the OSI model. We have the application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and also physical. For the TCP IP model, we have the application, transport, internet, and also network access. Look guys, for the purpose of this application, we'll not need to concern ourselves with many of the lower level protocols, but we do need to know what we're using in this application. And what we're using is the TCP, which is the transport control protocol. And what you need to know is that TCP and UDP are transport layer protocols and they govern how the data is sent from one point to another. And we're building on top of the TCP, which means we do not need to care about how the data is sent. We just need to care about what and where the data is going to be sent. And I'm sure maybe some of you are like, what is UDP? Okay, guys, now the differences you need to realize between TCP and UDP is that TCP guarantees reliable delivery without any information being lost duplicated or even being out of order. On the other hand, UDP doesn't guarantee the same and leaves it up to the application layer to handle dropped packets. It requires the server to acknowledge receipts of data. You can see right here, we have a diagram that shows us the TCP and the UDP. The thing with UDP is that it's normally used for time sensitive transmission where a drop packet is preferred to waiting for a lost packet to be retransmitted. Now, I want you to imagine a real time voice call, for example. If the package has been sent, it won't make sense to wait for the piece of audio to actually arrive because by the time it does, it would already be too old. Furthermore, you'd probably still be able to piece the conversation together without that packet of audio. But with TCP on the other hand, we keep on resending the piece of lost audio, even though it's already too old to be of any use. However, for most applications, this aspect of TCP is extremely valuable. In our chat application, we don't want to have to deal with the lost package because we always want to receive complete messages without any errors. Hopefully guys, you understood this. If you didn't, it's always good to rewind the video and watch it again. That helps a lot. But now that we've gone through all this, the next video will be the chat room server. And then the one to follow that will be the chat room client. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new and so you don't miss the other series that are coming up. I'm going to wrap this up and I'll see you on the next one.